Have you ever played a bad video game before? A game that just absolutely sucks? If you've been gaming for as long as I have, it's bound to have happened once or twice. However, what specifically makes a bad game? What makes a game bad? What makes a bad game bad? What makes a game bad game? That's where the line begins to blur. What you may call a bad game may not be seen as such by some other people. And likewise, what other people in the world denounce as a bad game may not be seen by you yourself as a bad game. Your mileage may vary as to what a bad game is. For example, I unironically adore Shadow the Hedgehog, the one where they gave Shadow a gun and made him curse like a sailor to make him appeal to angsty 15-year-olds, which is precisely what I was at the time, but I think people are crazy for praising Team Ico's games as these earth-shattering, industry-defining powerhouses when all they ever make is just barely above average, minimalistic, boring fluff. Maybe some people will agree with me, most probably won't. But that's okay. I'm neither right nor wrong. It's just my opinion. And as I've been told all my life, nobody gives a damn about your opinion. And that's kind of the beauty of gaming. Everyone's tastes are radically different. One man's 6 out of 10 could be another man's game of the decade contender. We're all entitled to our own opinions, and we should all make peace with that. The same cannot be said when it comes to the worst games ever. You played bad games, right? Well, have you played one of the worst ever? You know the ones. The games that are so cataclysmically bad, they reach a level of infamy in the gaming sphere that lasts for decades. The ones that have been sung about in legend since time immemorial. The ones that got critically panned and laughed out of the cultural zeitgeist and into the societal garbage dump. The games that appear on every worst games of all time list you see on YouTube. I'm talking your Hong Kong 97s, your Dai Katanas, your Action 52s, your Zelda Wands of Gamelon, your E.T. for the Atari 2600s. Uh, well, look there. There's a top five worst games list already. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe. See you tomorrow. Wait, 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 wait. All those games are decades old. Why is it whenever I hear about these lists about the worst games ever, it's always the usual suspects? Uh, sure, these games are universally, apocalyptically bad, if you could argue that, but come on. E.T. for the Atari 2600 is like over 40 years old. Aren't you tired of hearing about this game? We all know about the landfill, the moronic decisions from Atari at the time, how it was the tipping point for the video game industry to crash. Look, they make documentaries about it now. We get it. We know. But how can it still be the worst game ever, still, after all these years? The industry has changed so much since those days. Barely anything about it can be held up to today's standards. Oh heck, about the only things that did carry over is corporate greed and how executives treat the developers of their games. What feelings of anguish and hatred could a blooping green blob of an alien instill in you 40 years later on a console that's the gaming equivalent of an 8-track player, when the new Alone in the Dark game blows chunks right now? Maybe it's time to broaden the scope a bit. You see, I'm of the mind that any player's worst game list can be just as unique as their best game list. No two gamers are the same, after all. One person's experience with a game could have been so negative no other software could even compare to the level of anger and buyer's remorse they felt. But it probably wasn't that big of a deal to everyone else. Who knows what everyone's personal worst game is? Maybe there's someone out there that has a burning intense hatred for Sam and Max or something, because they hate dogs and rabbits and good taste. Or maybe there's someone out there who just can't stand the color green, so they only play games that have a 70 or lower on Metacritic. I don't know. Gamers are a weird bunch. Who knows what qualifies as the worst game ever for anybody anymore. So, what's your worst game ever? You have to have at least one, right? A bad game so bad that you couldn't even believe how bad it was. A game that you hated so much that it baffled you as to how unplayable it was. Maybe you have a game that amuses you because it was so bad. You know, so bad it's good, right? Maybe it's a game that disappointed you so much you developed trust issues as a result. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Sure you have. Heck, I've got a few examples myself. Five to be exact. Five of the worst games I've ever played in my life, maybe even of all time. These are games that either fascinated me and how off their design was, or games that have personally wronged me in some fashion. And they are games that you may not see on any other worst game ever list. There's some obscure ones that get overshadowed by their more popular brethren, and a few outliers that don't appear on any list. You may even like one of these games on this list, hmm. But that's why it's my list. It's all my opinion, and that's all it is. We're just here to have fun, maybe open a little friendly dialogue. Well, now that all the niceties are out of the way, let's get started with my... Worst Games of All Time. 
When we're talking bad games, low quality is the first descriptor that probably comes to mind. Poor coding and technical prowess, cut corners that can be measured in kilometers, general instability during anything, heck, it might not even be finished. We've all got our own grudges, I'm sure. Games like Kong Skull Island and that Gollum game are probably the most recent notable examples, but here's an example of a game I just love bringing up. It's a bit on the old side and also on the relatively obscure side, but the design and technical makeup of this game is just so baffling, so awful, it just fascinates me to no end. This is Hokushio Miruhito! Hoshio Mirukito, or Stars of Looking Person, or er, Stargazers, I guess, is an ambitious high fantasy role playing game made for the Famicom in 1987 and released only in Japan. It was released a few months before the original Final Fantasy, but a tad bit after the original Dragon Quest. It was made by a studio called Another, who they. Uh, did, well, who cares who they were, let's be honest. And it was published by a company called Hot B, who are better known for a series of fishing games. That's pretty wild, isn't it? It'd be like if the guys who made Sturia Seasons got together to make something like Baldur's Gate 3. Quite an undertaking, but maybe not the wisest decision, given the scope involved. Hardcore Gaming 101 has an old yet invaluable article about this game if you want a more in-depth history lesson, and it's definitely worth the read. Well, uh, with all that aside, how bad could it be? I mean, in Japan it's referred to as a kusoge, or legendarily shit game. Yeah, that bodes well. Starting off, you think Stargazers might have something going for it. It's set in a futuristic setting, differing greatly from its contemporaries at the time, which went for the more medieval fantasy template. It's apparently influenced by some 80s sci-fi novel called Psychic City, which is where a lot of the setting comes from, I guess. Like, cyberpunk stuff, but with psychic powers or something or whatever. No, I've never heard of it either. This is Gibson Country. Well, either way, there's a deep, rich lore that was created just for this title, complete with a post-apocalypse and some disease that's ravaging the land and all that lovely dressing. But the only thing that truly matters is what's on the cartridge, and let's just say it's not very good. Starting out, you're in the overworld. The tile set seems rather basic and blocky, but hey, that's Famicom games at the time for you. You move agonizingly slow, and you're given no context for anything just yet. It doesn't seem like there's anywhere to go at first until you just suddenly find yourself in a town. What? Why? Well, that's apparently tied to the lore I mentioned. You see, because it's a post-apocalyptic future, the towns are actually disguised as one of the trees of the forests, so as to not be detected by outside forces and to protect from the disease. This means that you can't see it either. That's right, the towns are invisible! And for the opening village, too! That's quite the ballsy design choice to make your villages invisible. Well, again, inside the village, the tile set looks really bad here. Dragon Quest looked a lot better by comparison, which, if you squint, you can see that's kind of what they were trying to ape. Actually, it's probably a bit more like Dragon Quest II, since the object here is to go find your party members. Well, you got your inn, you got your general store, and your NPCs that lag the game every time they need to move, and you still move as slow as you did in the overworld. This alone makes the game nigh unplayable. At least the soundtrack is memorable, even if it is for all the wrong reasons. Well, back out in the overworld, there's another town north of this one. At least I think this mess of pixels is supposed to be a town. Wait, hang on, why can I see it? Why is it not invisible like the first one? Why does it look exactly like the first town? The hell is this guy doing out here in a part of town I can't reach? Well, it's a little hard to tell where to go without proper context, but one of the townsfolk here will tell you to go south to pick up your first party member. And just when you have to lament going all the way back south again, fortunately, when you exit this village, you're warped back to the starting point of the game. Yeah, real quality work we're dealing with here so far. Definitely doesn't scream, we bit off far more than we can chew. And that's not even the worst part. Let's step outside into the overworld once again and initiate some combat. Be careful though, because the enemy pools haven't been properly set up. So even though you're just starting, you have a chance to get into a fight with any monster in the game, or rather, any combination of monsters in the game. Either you get ganged up by too many monsters for one person to handle, or sometimes, rarely, even the more super powerful late game monsters show up, of which you have no chance of even breathing on. Many times when you begin Stargazers, you will die in your first fight. But if you do manage to get into a more fair fight, you'll come to realize one of the most ludicrous coding oversights I think I've ever seen in any published video game. This is the battle screen, obviously, and it seems fine at first. A little primitive, sure, but functional. You've got your character down here and your health right there, too. You've got psychic abilities to fight with. You don't have any right now. It's just the usual turn-based stuff here. Now, I've got a little bit of health left now, so I'm probably gonna die on this next hit. Yeah, 11 damage. I'm dead. Oh. 
I guess not. What, did they make me invincible by accident? Well, maybe that was a fluke. Maybe they got the math wrong. Well, this hit's definitely gonna kill me. I am for sure dead now. Or not? What's going on? Well, I am indeed losing health, but that's actually not my full health bar. No, somehow this game is only displaying the ones digit. That's right, the battle UI is only showing the rightmost digit of your health. So you have no idea how close to death you really are. Do I have 22 health? Or 92 health? Or 122 health? Or 5,592 health? Do they honestly expect me to play the whole damn game like this? And when you inevitably die, you're just booted back to the main menu, right at the start, to do all this all over again. Oh boy! That's a lot of crap! So glad I skipped Dragon Quest II for this one! Yeah! Well, now that we've covered all that, it's time for me to become a grouchy old man for a second and complain about superfluous nonsense and rag on about personal gripes. Okay, here we go. It may not seem like it for my love of FromSoft games, but I don't like really hard games. It's true. Sure, I like a good meaty challenge from time to time. Better so if it's got a nice fleshed out world I can lose myself in, but I can only really take so much. It's a slippery slope to go from exciting challenge to consensual torture. There's a lot of kinds of hard games out there, a lot of which utilize a skill set I don't have. For me, I especially can't handle high precision platforming and split second reflex action games. Just can't, I just can't play them, no matter how good they are. There's plenty of examples. Super Meat Boy, Celeste, Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy, Hotline Miami, The Binding of Isaac, Hades most recently. I don't have the ability, nor the reflexes, nor the patience to play these games and have an enjoyable time. I'm just not good enough. The thing is, these are all damn fine games in their own regard, and the problem is most definitely me, but there's one game like this that baffles and frustrates me from even an outsider's perspective. Like, when I first played this game, I legitimately thought it was a scam of some sort. That's how bad it is. This is Jump King. Jump King is a type of game that exists just to make you mad. It's one of those streaming rage bait gotcha games whose only purpose is to infuriate you and make you scream very loudly into your microphone and entertain your viewers on Twitch. This is where you take a perfectly functional game and take away aspects that make the game just at the cusp of unplayable, and then wait for either the sweaties to come sniffing or until a popular streamer yells at your game enough to rocket your title at the top of the Steam charts. I'm being really mean about it though, so nothing against those kinds of games, and really nothing against Jump King either. People worked hard on this, and it's good they have an audience, but personally, this kind of game just grinds my gears, and I'm only picking on it because it's nearby. Now, let's get this over with. You play as the Jump King, and I'll give you three guesses as to what he's the king of. Exactly. Woodwork restoration. But he's a king of jumping, too. Starting out, the game declares that there's a smoking hot babe at the top of the tower, and throws you into a beautifully detailed pixel art world, instructing you to get to doing what you're named after. Luring me with a babe? A few wobbling pixels were generously calling a babe is supposed to entice me to play your ultra hard game to completion? Here in the age of adult games on Steam? Nice try. I will not fall for your carrot on a stick, Jump King. Well, your only means of jumping is holding down the button to charge your jumps, which will adjust your jump height, and by holding a direction, you can adjust your direction as you jump. There is no way of knowing how long or how strong your jump is going to be or how far you're going to go. There are no audio or visual cues to inform you, you just have to know in your heart. The jump itself is stiff and miserable, with no room to adjust your trajectory in midair. Once your feet leave the ground, that's it. There's no turning back. The die has been cast, and you must accept your fate. Not only do you have this chaotic jumping mechanic, every time you bump into a wall, you ricochet backwards by an insane degree, which means any wrong jump could stunlock you down miles and miles, killing minutes, even hours of your progress at a time, with not a thing you can do about it. And then you will fall, and then you will land, and the game has already auto-saved. And there you will sit, and there you will wallow, and the game will insult you, and no one will care, and no one will cry for you, and the universe will forget you, and then you just have to will yourself back into existence to try again. If that sounds like the kind of challenge you want, then hey, more power to ya! But for me, this is just an untenable level of challenge for me. The effort required doesn't match the reward I gain. I feel I can't revel in my success because there's always something ahead that could reverse it. It doesn't offer me any satisfaction to move forward, knowing that it can all be washed away in a nanosecond, namely due to the game's unflinching, unpredictable nature. Why am I not playing a better game? Why am I not playing a game where it doesn't control like total butt? Why am I wasting my time with this troll game schlock? Why am I even still talking about it? I'm not even streaming this on Twitch to scream obnoxiously and have people laugh at my ineptitude. What are we of time and money. Uh-huh. I learned from my mistake. I never tried again.
Great advice, Jump King. Glad we got all that cleared up. Jump King! Then we'll have five Has a game ever stabbed you in the back? You gave it a chance, you forgave some of its shortcomings, you kept through it till the end, and you were just hoping and wishing that if the game had been testing you all this time, surely by the end it would pay off somehow. And it never did. That's what the new Soccer Wars game did to me. A reboot, reimagining, re-something of the original Soccer Wars series, some 15 odd years since the last game came out. New Soccer Wars is perhaps my currently most hated game I've ever played. Maybe because the wounds are still relatively fresh, maybe because of the insane decisions involved in its content, like what they did to the original cast, or maybe it's because you're given the illusion that it's a romantic RPG with branching narratives and interesting character development and interaction, when in reality it's a linear aimless button masher with flat, lifeless characters who you hate, but the story seems to love, or the fact that you may think that you have your pick of the five lovely ladies shown on all the box art and the promotional material, when really you're bottlenecked into just one, or maybe it's because this game is still very highly rated on most gaming review sites. What the crap, you douchebags? Am I the only one who sees what's wrong with this crap? Wake up, you idiot! Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. It just goes to show you, any day where I think about new Sakura Wars is not a pleasant day. I mean, I've got an entire Let's Play detailing my woes and my hatred surrounding this game. If I start ranting about my problems with it, I'll just be parroting everything I said in that Let's Play. It's because of this game that I don't play a lot of bad games on my channel anymore. Well, fortunately, I have just now hired an editor to help me with this next part. He has agreed to edit or remove any more parts of what I've written that seem like I'm complaining too much or otherwise showing too much of my negative bias. Now, let's keep things professional and do this properly with a neutral demeanor. <clears throat> New Sakura Wars is a piece of shit. Boy, am I sick of all the Sonic hate. Seems like ever since even his Saturn days, the guy just can't catch a break. I've been hearing the same junk all my life. All 3D Sonic games are bad. All modern Sonic games are bad. Sonic was never good. Enough. If he really was that bad, old Needle Mouse would have hung up his shoes a long time ago. But somehow he's still trucking today. Look, this blue guy just wants to run fast and have fun. But a lot of his games have been, well, let's just say, polarizing. I consider myself a Sonic fan, and I'm even one of those freaks that liked Sonic Adventure. Wait, no, it's my favorite. Fight me. But even a complete degenerate like myself knows that Sonic's been in some indefensibly garbage games over the years. What people consider a good or bad Sonic game is subjective, but what's the worst Sonic game ever made, do you think? Hmm? Again, I'm not sure everyone's answer is the same. Most commonly, it's probably going to be Sonic 06 or Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Maybe Shadow the Hedgehog or Sonic R, Sonic Forces or Sonic Spinball, Sonic Genesis for GBA even, Sonic Labyrinth 3 Don't Even Go Fast, or some other inferior Game Gear schluck like Sonic Chaos. What about Sonic Chronicles or Sonic 4, Sonic Shuffle, Sonic the Fighters, Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic Schoolhouse, Sonic Crackers? All good and valid choices, and this list is obviously not exhaustive in the slightest. But for me, I think it's painfully obvious what the worst one is. Maybe even worse than all of these combined. The absolute worst Sonic game of all time is... A Chinese hack of the Master System Sonic game for the original Game Boy. Hope you don't have headphones in. Kick it! This is Sonic 3D Blast 5! It's supposed to be a pirate of the original 8-bit Sonic games playable on the original Game Boy! The gameplay may be a little bare bones, but with a soundtrack like this, how can you go wrong? <laughs> All right, that's enough. This particular company is called Yong Yong, and they have a distinct style. If you look up games like Super Mario 3 Special and Sonic Adventure 7, you'll probably understand what that distinct style is pretty quickly. The grating, soul-destroying, awful music that makes you want to do violent things to strangers. It's kind of hard to forgive the pedestrian, boring gameplay with jackhammers being shoved down your ears. Ugh, oh, enough. That's enough of that. Believe me, you play this for more than five minutes, and Princess of Least Kissing Sonic doesn't seem that bad anymore. Never mind, it's still bad. Okay, the Werehawk sections in Sonic Unleashed aren't so bad anymore. That's, that's, those are still bad too. Alright, right, it's not as bad as the boss fights in Sonic Superstar. Yeah, maybe it's all bad! Oh crap. Maybe they were right. Maybe Sonic was never good to begin with in the first place. Oh well, moving on. And now, we've come to the big one. The true, actual, worst game of all time. The single, malignant tumor 
festering over the gaming industry, where good taste goes to die and the red Metacritic numbers come pouring in. The point where this game became known to the world is the same point where humanity began its decline. To all who have played this beast, their lives were forever changed. Changed in a way no software ever could change a person. This black mark on society, this abomination to creation and all living beings is known by its unholy name as... It's... Uh... 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 E.T. for the Atari 2600. April Fools! April Fools!